if you are on your mobile phone, your cell phone, then a lot of times it's kind of on the bottom right, there are three dots and there's a chat in there. So click on the chat um, and then let us know where you're calling in from. Let us know what industry or uh, job you are looking for right now. And then drop in your LinkedIn URL. And when you drop in your LinkedIn URL, I encourage you to go out to um, LinkedIn, open up a browser or on your phone, open up your um, Chrome uh, or your browser and find your profile. And you can do that by kind of clicking on your picture. And then if you click on your picture, um, your URL in the top of your browser will come up. Uh, click on that URL, copy it, and then bring it over here and paste it. So um, if you don't make it clickable, then we can't actually click to it um, in the chat. We can't save the chat because the security reasons, we don't allow the chat to be saved. So make sure you go ahead and uh, copy that. Um, let's see, who's a Mike? Mike from Gilbert, that is perfect. Everyone connect with Mike um, from Gilbert and you can see Joe, he has put his information on there. So you guys connect with each other because we're in a virtual environment. We always encourage you to reach out to people, ask questions, connect with them. And especially for this event, we have an awesome panel. We have questions that you all asked ahead of time that we're gonna ask today. However, you can also drop your questions in the chat. We have people moderating the chat. We have the ladies from the Resume Writers Council of Arizona that are here and they will be answering some of the questions in the chat today. So feel free to um, join us on the chat as much as you'd like. We'd love to engage with you that way. Um, also, each of us will drop our LinkedIn URLs in there. Connect with us. We'd love to join, connect with you on LinkedIn. It's another way for you to have a connection as well. Uh, Sheila, you want to walk us through some tech stuff? Oh, sure. Okay. I think you covered the chat really well. So that's awesome. Um, and before I forget, toward the end of the event, we're going to ask you just a couple of polling questions uh, about how the event went. So when those windows pop up, again, that's toward the end. Uh, if you just answer the question, the window will go away. Um, the people who are on video, good morning. It's really good to see your faces. We love to see the smiles. So I encourage everybody to do that if you're comfortable. And if you see the, the videos that are on screen, you can control where they are if you're on a desktop, uh, where they are on your computer, how many of them you see, if you see all of them, or if you just see the speaker, all by um, the black box around the videos has some icons at the top. So you can play with that. If anyone's in need of closed captioning today, just go ahead and let me know in the chat and we will get that going for you. Also wanted to mention, we've had some smaller events that have been not public, but invite only people that have attended recently. We've invited to coaching events and that's um, designed to replace what we used to be able to do at the live events at the end where we'd have tables with our coaches and the companies. Um, so you can shoot us an email if you're interested in being included in those contact at careerconnectors.org. And Jessica's going to tell you in a minute that we're actually going to try that out at the end of today's event as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sheila. All right. So um, what we have today is on our agenda, we have a really cool event with our Resume Writers Council of Arizona. We do this event a couple times a year and we are closing out the year. Um, we have one more event after today, but in December, we like to do this event. You're really getting ready to do a hard push in January. So it gives you a couple weeks to get your resume right if you don't feel like you have it right yet. So um, we're gonna have Brenda, Jerry, Amanda, and Donna uh, talking resume mythbusters on our certified resume writer panel today. Uh, that will take about 45 minutes or so. Uh, we have a ton of questions, so I'm not going to get to them all, but I'm going to do my best because you guys had some really good stuff. And then we're going to hear from Cybercom. Caitlin is going to speak about Cybercom and their opportunities. We're going to hear from Joe, um, from U.S. Health Advisors, and then we are going to close it out with some resources. But hang on, we are not done today, right at 10 30, 11 o'clock. We have now the ability to have you all connect in breakout rooms. And so, um, the Zoom platform now in a secure manner is allowing us this um, opportunity. So at the end of our event today, 
our resume writers, Caitlin, Joe, some career coaches are all going to be shuffled off into their own rooms, breakout rooms. And you are going to be able to join whichever room you would like. You can go for some kind of group coaching. If you're the only one in there, some one-on-one -on -one coaching, ask questions, talk to our coaches, talk to our hiring companies, but then it's an opportunity for you to get in one time or small group coaching time. So don't miss out at the end. Write down your questions. You can ask them in the chat, but also write them down for you so that at the end of the day today, you can jump over to um, maybe Amanda's room or Brenda or Donna or Jerry or somebody's room and say, hey, I heard you say this, but I'm not really sure. And I have some questions. So really cool thing we're getting to try. We usually do this at our live events, uh, but since we haven't been live since March, the technology hasn't been secure enough to allow us to do it. So we are trying it out today. You are all the first. So you're gonna give, a, give us a lot of grace in case something weird happens, but <laughs> I know it's gonna be good. So, all right, that's um, our event that we have for you guys today. And I am going to, uh, let's introduce the awesome ladies that we have. Um, let me jump over here. There we go. Okay. So our resume panel today is Brenda Cunningham. She's the CEO of Push Career Management and the president of the Resume Writers Council of Arizona. We have Jerry Hurd Dutcher. She is also a certified resume writer, an interview professional, and a career coach. And she has written resumes and co coach clients for 20 years. Amanda Miller is with us today. She's the owner of Ink and Quill Communications, which is a boutique content marketing firm, but she has been writing resumes since 1996. And then we have Donna Tucker here. She is also a certified professional resume writer and nationally certified online profile expert. And she has been writing resumes since 1988. We have the best of the best. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome. All right, so let's get this show on the road. Look at that chat blowing up. Good job on the chat, you guys. Keep it coming. We're watching the chat and we're going to try and take some questions um, that come through today as well. So let's start by each of you kind of um, introduce us, introduce us uh, yourselves. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Um, and then tell us one like, What's maybe, I don't know if favorite is the right word, but what's your favorite or most fun mistake or greatest mistake you've seen come in on a resume lately? So Brenda, you want to get us kicked off today? Uh, surely. I'm so excited to be here again. This is fabulous. Um, so <laughs> good morning, Career Connectors. And uh, my name is Brenda Cunningham with Push Career Management now. Um, I started my career as an engineer and project manager, and so I tend to work a lot with very techy folks, and I can kind of speak tech and translate that into plain language. Um, and I don't know, one of the things that I will say that I, I see a lot is people trying to do kind of one size fits all resumes. There is zero focus. It's just like, let me just let me just include everything that I've ever done as opposed to working toward a specific goal. And so there is no focus um, and there is not this understanding that we, if you are pursuing multiple paths in your career that you probably need multiple versions of your resume to accommodate it. So that's my little favorite fun tip. <laughs> awesome, that's great. Thank you, Brenda. Donna? Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't ready to be second. I thought I was last. Um, Donna Tucker, Career Pro Resume Center, and as uh, Jessica said, I've been writing resumes since 1988. Um, I'm the founding member of the Resume Writers Council of Arizona, which I'm proud of, and I'm a national officer of the National Resume Writers Association. And I think one of the worst things that I see on a resume is um, what, what a colleague of mine calls death by bullets. Just nothing but bullets, you know, 20, 20 of them in a row. And the worst part of it is they aren't saying anything other than functions of the job. Um, uh, typing, filing, anyway, just, just functions. And that's not showing your value. It's not showing your accomplishment. 
and it's not going to do you any good at all. Maybe some of them are key words, but they're, they're out of context. Yeah, great. We have a lot to say today about accomplishments and how to make that work. So awesome. Thank you, Brenda. Jerry. Thanks, Jessica. I'm really glad to be here. Um, my name is Jerry Hurd Dutcher. I'm with Work Right Resumes. I'm in Tucson. Um, I'm, I'm no longer taking clients, so I would direct you to any of the other women on the panel today for resume writing, but I still work my, with my existing clients, several hundred of them. Um, when I was full-time, I provided resumes, related documents, coaching for career exploration, interviewing, salary negotiations, and job search. Um, the biggest mistake I still see on, on homemade resumes is the same as Donna is talking about, the lack of accomplishments. But the funniest mistake I've seen is th this guy had so many, so much going for him that it was really a shame. <laughs> but he had centered his entire resume and done it in kind of a blue-green font. So you had this this mass of blue green type hitting you in the face and it was all centered. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna do some stuff here. <laughs> that's the kind of resume that's remembered for all the wrong reasons. Oh my yeah. gosh, it was just something. But the good part about it was we rewrote his resume. He had two offers, one interview, got the job. Oh, so love it. Yeah, we rescued him. <laughs> Love stories, huh? um, all right, Amanda, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, I am Amanda Miller. Um, pink is my thing. Wonder Woman is my thing also. So if you want to remember me, it's either pink or Wonder Woman or both. Um, <laughs> I have been writing resumes for a very long time and my background is primarily in marketing. And so I tend to see a lot of clients in the marketing and sales realm because we marketing folks are horrible at marketing ourselves and excellent at marketing everything else. So I get a lot of those and I see a lot of project managers, um, home services type people as well. So, you know, electricians, those kinds of things, because I understand and speak that language. Um, the funniest thing that I've seen, <laughs> probably the worst, was yesterday. I have a really recent example. Someone sent me his resume to review it and it was eight pages long. Ooh. So I think he wanted it to be a CV, but it really was more, he was trying to do a resume and he said, I'm just applying and getting crickets everywhere. On the first page was a picture of himself. He did not have an address, a phone number. He only had an email address and a URL for LinkedIn, which was not custom. I could not find professional experience anywhere on the resume. He had a page and a half long bio written in third person about himself that summarized what he'd done. He had his education with all of his dates going back to the 70s. It just goes on and on and on. And so I told him what he needed to do to fix it for applicant tracking software, which I know we'll talk about today. And he just flat out refused. I don't want to do that. And I am going to uh, find a job on my own and pooey on you. And I said, here. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we've heard over and over. Most resumes get a peak of maybe like, what, five to 10 to 15 seconds. So if a person has only made it to paragraph two in 15 seconds, that guy is not getting looked at. So uh, thanks. All right, ladies, um, let's, let's go ahead and dive in. So um, I love this question because um, so many people have opinions on resumes. And I'm sure if you are sitting on the phone today and you're looking at your resume, you may have had opinions from um, 15 different people and each of them said something different. And so it's so frustrating, we get that. So we want to bring you the experts and so I would like you ladies to kind of tell us basically why does it matter that you're certified why are we coming to you and why are you the experts in this I would love to jump in because yeah. of something that Donna said many years ago um, she was teaching a workshop 
at one of our National Resume Writers Association conferences, and it was called It Depends. And, um, and she was just talking about like, which situations, like, do you do, you do this sometimes? Well, it depends. Well, when do you do this? Well, it depends. And the, the key there is if you are not expert enough to know when to kind of break certain rules or when to um, implement certain strategies, then you may, may well be doing yourself a very big disservice. And so, yes, it does depend, um, but you must have a good working fundamental knowledge of what to do. And this is just flat out what we study. This is what we immerse ourselves into. So while you guys may be brilliant project managers and healthcare administrators and, and on and on and on, you know your craft, you know your business, you know your lane, you would never go to your dentist and say, oh, no, 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 this is how I want you to clean my teeth today. Like you are going to trust their expertise because you know that they have put in the work. And so this is what we do. This is just who we are, what we do, what we study, and we really dive deep to make sure that we understand when um, to apply certain rules and when not to. Yeah. Well, well said. Yeah. Yeah. What Brenda said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I certainly wouldn't just go to the doctor or go get medical advice from some random person. So um, I'm going to go to the doctor and I am going to you guys and I have whatever I have questions about resumes and LinkedIn profiles. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Let's dive into mechanics now. Um, the format, mechanics, that kind of stuff. So what are some of the most important things to have on a resume? I'd like to take that one. Sure. I, I've, tried to boil it down because so many people ask me this question. I would say keywords relevant to your target, a meaningful and impactful format that captivates the reader. That's good. Yeah, Donna, what else did you want to add? Your name, <laughs> <laughs> your email address. And, and a good one. I mean, not one that says uh, sexy fox at whatever. You're, you're, you want your, your email address to, to be your name. So when something comes into somebody's mailbox, they know who it's coming from without having to decipher it. Your, your phone number and your LinkedIn profile. Um, there's a little, still a little discussion on whether you need a full address on your resume. I don't put a full address on the resume, just the city and state and zip, but um, some people still think, so that's, you know, up to you. But with identity theft, it's one of those things that you might want to leave off, just like a license, uh, a, a nursing license or some kind of certification number. I usually like to leave those off because of uh, security reasons. And leave off references. I've been getting a lot of um, resumes lately with references. Um, that's a security issue. I, um, if you're listening, well, they don't go on a resume anyway. That's right. Um, Amanda, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I usually kind of go through. So I start at the top, like Donna did, with you know your name, your contact information. You need a headline to share who you are for the person who's reading it. So, you know, what that position is that you're looking for. A lot of people want to use their headline as what they do now, but you have to remember that a resume is forward thinking. So what are you applying for? That's one of the things that in that 10 second scan, a reviewer is going to look at. You also want to have a good summary slash profile slash branding statement, however you want to call it, that answers the question, why should I hire you? Because most of the time they will read that. Obviously the keywords, and then in your professional experience, which for most people comes right after that branding section, you wanna make sure that you divide up your overview of your job scope. That's usually in a brief, very brief, two to four line paragraph, and then bulleted accomplishments. And even when people do write accomplishments, I often find that they bury the lead. You wanna make <laughs> sure that you front load those and put the result first. So not, you know, did this, 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 and this, and this, which resulted in, because people aren't going to see that in a quick scan. So put the, what it resulted in first, you know, delivered this, generated this, increased, reduced, mitigated, those kinds of verbs. 
And then the education goes at the end with the dates removed. If it's been longer than five years, I usually just remove them anyway. And any experience for most people that's over 10 to 15 years, you wanna roll into an additional experience section. And then about two pages, um, it's arguable, one to two pages is where you wanna go. I will occasionally write a three page resume in rare instances, but typically I'm aiming for two pages. Great, all great stuff. Um, let a little bit more on the mechanics. Um, can you guys talk about um, font size, font in general? Thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, just a very simple um, kind of thing to think about font size. Generally speaking, you want that to be between, not, not smaller than 10, not larger than 12. Um, and font type actually matters. So if you're using a very kind of antiquated font like a Times New Roman, just be mindful of the fact that that's associated with a certain age group. And so just kind of keep that in mind. And so I tend to lean more toward a, a very clean font um, like Calibri. It just happens to be my favorite. Um, I use it probably 99% of the time. <laughs> Um, and then the margins like around the, the edge or the border of your document, I tend to not go smaller than a half inch or larger than an inch. I only use an inch if the person has like very limited experience and I'm trying to make the page seem full. Um, but otherwise the, the vast majority, I end up trying to condense 20 years. And so I end up with the smallest possible half inch margin. Um, so those are some, some things. I mean, we can really kind of nix things like underlines that maybe we used to use once upon a, a decade. Um, it, it's, we don't need those things anymore. I mean, we can, you can use bold, you can use a little bit of italics um, sparingly. Um, but I see people that kind of use these things overwhelmingly and then they end up being a distraction. Um, Brenda, somebody asked, um, is the Calibri a uh, sans serif? Yes. Okay. So just without the little feet on the edges of the letters, yes. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, Jerry. There's also a concern about um, what font shows up on the reader's resume reader's resume, reader's computer, as opposed to your own computer. Um, Arial is the, the most, I don't know the word. Um, universal. Universal, yeah, font. So it's, um, you have a bigger chance of it, your resume looking the same to your prospective boss as, you, as what you see. So I recommend Arial 10 for resumes, it's it's readable, it's sans serif, and it's the it's your best shot. That's great, awesome, thank you. All right, let's, uh, Brenda, you kind of mentioned this a little bit, but a question we get a lot of the time is around ageism, and so um, can you kind of can you guys give us some guidance tips on? Um, you know, what can, can we do something with our resume to help um, help that situation? Yeah, I, I love talking about ageism because it is, although illegal and completely despicable, it happens every single day. And so let's not let's not pretend here. This is the place we're going to get real raw and real today. Um, and so, yes, there are some things that people are doing maybe unknowingly. Um, to essentially shoot themselves in the foot around age discrimination. And so they're using things like AOL.com, Hotmail.com, email addresses. Their email address might be like a Gmail, but it might be first name, that last name, 1963 at Gmail. Um, you need way too much information. You're telling me dates of when you went to school back in the 70s, back in the early 80s. You're giving me too much information. You're using language and vocabulary like seasoned, retired, military, like stop. You are you are sending all the wrong signals because once you invoke that kind of vocabulary into my head, now my thought process is this person isn't going to be with me for the long run. I don't want to hire somebody who's in the last, you know, kind of fourth quarter of their career. I want somebody who's going to be with me. And so listen, stop inviting it. 
we're going back way too far on our resumes. We're going back, you know, for the beginning of time, we're saying things like, I have 35 years of experience. Like you do realize that people are holding that against you. It's not working in your favor. And so just kind of, I hope you heard all those different words that I just mentioned and really scan your own resumes, get out your red pen and start scratching some stuff out if you suspect that age discrimination is happening to you. Such good um, information. Um, ladies, you have anything to add to that? Well, there's more than just ageism. There's even sexism. Men, you know, I, I get jobs or are invited for interviews more often than women. Um, foreign names. I, I don't, and I really don't have an answer for that. But um, foreign names cause problems for people too, maybe because they're afraid they can't pronounce them well and embarrass themselves. But there's a, there's a lot of prejudice and you just got to present yourself in such a way that they have to call you because you're going to add such value to your, to the company. I agree with that, Donna. I, I think there's, there's another way of looking at ageism that says, if somebody's not going to hire me, because I might have a little gray hair here, I probably am not going to fit in that company very well. So I'm not going to pay attention to them either. I'm going to go look for a company. I'm gonna network my way into a company that welcomes my experience, my skill set, and everything that I do have to offer rather than um, you know, looking for no wrinkles. That's right. We just did an event with um, about 20 companies who are diversity, inclusion, um, diversity, equality and inclusion award winners in Arizona. Um, and they don't care <laughs> about, I mean, they care, but your background, your age, your race, your gender, that is not the point. The point is, do you fit this job? And so, in fact, they desire to have employees from all over the place to work for them because it brings more ideas. There's so much data to prove diversity candidates. And so um, if that's on your mind right now, ageism is why I'm not getting a job, I need you to set that aside and I need you to really look at your resume and do what Brenda said, redline it, um, talk to one of these ladies, say, what are you seeing that I'm not seeing? Talk to somebody that can really help you and get over that hump because it's not the age. Once you get over that and you start to look at it differently, then more things will come your way. So thank you, ladies. That's such good guidance. Okay, let's jump into content a little bit more. We keep hearing about accomplishments. Um, tell us a little bit, what, what are they? Um, why are they important? And how do you incorporate them into your resume? Ooh, ooh I want this one. <laughs> <laughs> so accomplishments okay. are the crux. <laughs> I'm eager. They're the crux of your resume. Um, when Donna was giving her introduction, she was talking about death by bullets. I've called many resumes that before. And what happens is, and the way, if you're of a certain age, you wrote resumes that way. When I first started writing resumes, and Donna probably is the same, they were more skill-based at that point. They are not as skill-based these days. They are much more accomplishment-based. However, you do want to include your skills. So what I always tell people is there are two components of each experience. So, you know, you have your position, your company, whatever. You want to talk about what you did. Did you manage people? Did you have budgets? What was a day like for you? What was your job scope? That's what you did. If that's all you did, then it looks like you phoned it in. How did you make a difference? So those are your accomplishments. And the easiest way that I always use is a challenge, action, result, or a car statement. You may have heard SAR, STAR, SOAR. I like car because it's simple and easy. There was a challenge that you faced. There was an action that you took to overcome that challenge. And then there was a result that, was, that came out of that action, which is typically the opposite of the challenge. So sales are super easy. Sales like sales are down, that's your challenge. The action is you implemented an employee training program and the result is in six months, sales increased 25%. How you would write that on your resume would be increased sales 25% in six months following implementation of employee training program. You don't put the challenge on your resume. 
Now, I know some of you are saying, well, I'm not in sales. I don't have numbers. That is okay. You do not have to have numbers. Numbers are preferable. We would love for you to have numbers on there, but some people just don't have numbers. So accomplishments in my experience, and the other ladies can chime in after I shut myself up, but the four areas of accomplishments, um, I always find them in these categories. You made the company money, you saved the company money, you made people happy. That could be internal, external, employees, customers, stakeholders, don't care. And then you improve processes and systems. Now I realize that in the CAR, that is an action, but there is a result associated with that, usually around productivity or efficiency. Those last two typically don't have numbers associated with them. So if you don't have, I made company money, I save the company money, focus on making people happy and processes and systems. I promise you, if you are have gotten through your jobs and have gotten promoted and been increased, you have accomplishments. Amanda, that's one of my most favorite things you've ever said. Focus <laughs> on making people happy. Yes, what did you do to make people happy? That's awesome, good. What else, uh, ladies? I think Amanda really nailed it. Um, sometimes when people do like really seriously struggle with numbers, um, we just, any number you can grasp at, like yeah. even if you're, let's say you're a nurse, um, how many patients did you, you know, kind of take care of at the same time? If you're a teacher, how many students did you have? I mean, just, just anything that you can help to um, paint a picture of, of what you did, how well you did it, what kind of uh, scale and scope you did that thing on. And so just to kind of put it in perspective, when I think of an accomplishment, I've used this example before, so if you heard it before, just earmuffs, it's okay. Um, but I, I think about people that put things like a bullet point and they say like answer phones. <laughs> Let me tell you, right? If you tell me that you answered a phone, I'm not going to be uh, delighted about uh, paying you $60,000 a year to do that. I don't, my 15 year old daughter can answer a phone for free. And so why should I pay you serious coin to answer a phone? And the answer is I shouldn't. I should, I should pay you serious money because you answered maybe 400 calls per day while you documented notes. Like, tell me what was so darn special about you answering phones that translates into me paying you good money. And so really think from the, the other perspective, why should I care about this bullet point that you've ju just chosen to put on your resume? And if it does not give me a sense of why I should care, then it probably doesn't need to be there. Good, perfect. These are things that help employers evaluate you when, you know, against all of the other candidates. And if all of you say answered phones, typed stuff, entered data, there's no basis again, you know, against which they're going to evaluate. So when you show your value by doing the, the things that you do better than anybody else, that's when they can tell it's a value to them. Yep, thanks, Jerry. Okay, you guys, I wanna talk about uh, employment gaps. So um, right now people, I remember back in the recession of 2009, that's when Career Connectors originally launched. A lot of people had employment gaps that they were dealing with. Um, employment gaps for either being laid off or work transition, but now we have um, employment gaps because of COVID. Uh, people staying home to take care of uh, family, raising kids, uh, lots of reasons for employment gaps. And so can you talk to us about how do we handle these type of situations where there is an employment gap? I'll do that or start anyway. I think that there should be a, a, a quick line. You don't have to go into any detail. Your personal life is your personal life, but a line that explains a little bit about uh, what you've been doing. Um, even uh, sabbatical to care for aging parent is pretty much all you need in between the two jobs. Uh, they'll ask you in an interview details if it's important to them, but just enough to show that you weren't just sitting home watching soap operas and eating bonbons. Um, there's always something that you can put, but just the line, don't go into detail. That's what I say. Amen. Um, I would just add 
there was something in me that wanted to say earlier. I've seen people actually talk about different illnesses if they've like battled cancer or something like that. If they themselves have been going through, you know, chronic illness and treatments, um, please do your very best to refrain from mentioning those things on your resume. Um, there are all sorts of assumptions that people will make for you. Um, once the the c word is uttered right and so just just kind of steer clear of those things but the whole the whole point behind gaps is like did your skills get stale um have you forgotten how to do the work that's kind of the the issue with gap and so i want you to understand the issue there and so now that you understand the issue it's like okay well how can i address this gap um, more productively. And so talk about things that you did, like maybe you can say professional development. So maybe you yeah. pursued certifications or did some volunteer work, but talk about it, account for the time in such a way that people know you, like she said, you weren't just sitting there eating bonbons and your skills were getting dull, duller and duller by the minute that you were staying sharp. You were sharpening that saw every day um, that you pursued certifications. You earned a degree. You took some classes. You taught some classes, whatever it was that you did make sure you just account for the time, but do also um, steer clear of any, any kind of negative repercussion yeah. things like chronic illness. One other thing to add to that, it, it might depend too on the amount of time. I've had people that had years as far as gaps and that one line really doesn't um, cover that too well. Uh, so it might be like Brenda says, education, that would make a big difference, but um, Perhaps if, if you can did some help somebody start a business, you, you might not have gotten paid for it. It doesn't have to be paid to be experienced. Um, volunteer work, something like that, if it's a long amount of time. Yeah, let me, uh, yeah, go ahead, Jerry. I would also add to that. I, I know, that, Karen, quiet. I know that people are very concerned right now because of so many layoffs. And I, I really wouldn't be that worried about it. Everybody in the country, everybody in the world knows what happened in 2020. I mean, we've got t-shirts about it, you know, so it's, you know, I, I think that like Donna said, the time should be accounted for, but if you were laid off by COVID, sometimes that's all you need to say nobody's going to hold that against you half the population is in that circumstance so if that's what you're worried about is a gap because of covid take that off your worry list you don't need to yeah let's talk a little bit about you guys so that one liner about um covid closure or um company closed due to covid is fine is there anything else that this pandemic has done where we need to look at our resumes and adjust anything. Is there anything else? Yeah, Donna. Right now, what companies are looking for are good problem solvers. Um, mm -hmm. Even if they didn't shut down, there, there, there's, there's issues that have come up that, um, that they've never faced before. So show them that you can solve problems, that you can help them be better, more successful to, to rebuild. Um, increase productivity, reduce waste, um, make, make their employees um, more comfortable and, and, and reduce the fear that so many employees might be having because they're afraid of being laid off. Um, but you've got to be a good problem solver. And, and I just really start right that up, start right off the resume with, with something like that. Yeah, don't be afraid to include like a bullet that talks about what you did in response to COVID. Um, th these are absolutely fantastic. Like, how did you help your organization pivot? Um, and, and let's look at Career Connectors as an example, right? This was a live event um, that happened what, every, every week or every two weeks, um, but we were coming together in person and all of a sudden, nobody's meeting in person. Whose idea was it? Okay, I got it. We can do this over Zoom. We can Facebook Live. We can, we, 
somebody came up with this thought somebody implemented somebody made it happen shout out to sheila and jessica right so somebody made the thing <laughs> happen it, it didn't just fall out of the sky somebody had the idea somebody put it into practice um i, I know sheila works in the background and she made sure she set up all these breakout classrooms and all these things because we couldn't do things the way we've always done things and so what did you do to help your organization pivot from the way they'd always done things. Talk about it. And another thing that employers are often looking for, I've heard this from many, is in this age of virtual work, they're looking on your resume to see if you have capabilities in that. Have you done remote work? Do you understand Slack, Asana, Zoom, whatever those things are? This is a good time to add those into your resume because people are looking for that. They want to know, can you work in a virtual environment and have you been successful in it in recent past? That's so good. Um, I believe most companies are asking that even in an interview now. Um, you know, do you know Zoom? Do you know WebEx? You know, have you utilized those software programs? That's great. Okay. So one of my favorite topics we're gonna to dive into right now. And one of the reasons the, the information these ladies are giving you are, is so important is um, around applicant tracking systems. And so uh, some people don't even, don't, aren't sure what those are. Um, some people hate them, some people love them. And so we've all got the feels about applicant tracking systems. So um, let's start off by what is an applicant tracking system and how are they used? Let's, someone take that. Go ahead, Donna. Donna answer. Baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there are about, there's probably more than 200 different applicant tracking software systems. Uh, if, you, if you submit your resume online, it's going to go through ATS. There are probably 99% of companies use it today. And it reviews your resume by keyword, keywords, I guess it would be more than one, and will rate you or score you depending upon how you match um, the algorithms that it's been designed to look for. And human eyes probably will never see your resume if you don't include the appropriate key keywords. That's where that job posting is so important and why it's so important to tweak your resume with every, every time you apply for a job to make sure that you've got all the keywords in your resume that they're talking about in the job announcement. Listen to what she just said. Everybody, if you are not listening, focus, focus, we need you right here. <laughs> Every single time you apply for a job, tweak your resume. You don't have to redo the whole thing, but you do need to tweak it. You need those keywords and it's specific to that company. I wanna make one vocabulary change, Jessica. I, I personally don't love the word tweak because people take that and and think I have to rebuild my whole resume. I have to change my strategy every single time. And so the, the word that I like to use is customize. Yes, yes, Mary, I see you type that in. Yes, customize, customize, customize. Now, the very first time we did this panel many years ago, um, I, I said a quote and you were like, oh, we're gonna tweet that. And I was like, we are not gonna be lazy job seekers, right? We are going to do the work. Come on, y'all. The name of my company is Push Career Management, and that is not by accident. We are not allergic to doing the work. And so part of the hard but necessary work of job search is to make sure that the language in your resume matches exactly the language from their job description. Do not try to, to, to wimp out or lazy out on that. This is what's going to help your resume uh, get through the, those scanning software systems. Because again, you have to remember how much competition you have for each of these positions. And now you're not even just competing with people in your local area with so many things becoming virtual, you're competing with people all over the country, sometimes all over the world. And so what are you going to do 
to set yourself apart. You're going to show them that I've got exactly what you're looking for and you are going to take the time to do that. I'm talking about putting in about an hour every single time you go to apply for something to really compare to job posting versus your resume, swap out vocabulary words. If they said um, project leadership, but you said project management, you make it project leadership. So you make sure that you're matching like word for word. And I'm seeing Donna and Jerry, I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. Go ahead, Donna. Um, well, now I've forgotten. She just got me. Go ahead, Jerry. It'll come back while you're talking. I'm old. One of the easier way, a lot of people find it hard to tailor their resumes. If they were great writers, they'd be writing resumes for a living. They're not. Um, an easy way to figure out what keywords you need, what you don't need, how many you need, where, is to use JobScan. It's an app oh, yeah. that's at the, the site JobScan, J-O-B-S-C-A-N dot C-O. And the, what the app does is compare your resume as you've written it with the job description that you're applying to. And it will tell you the keywords that you're missing. It will tell you phrases that you're missing and they won't make a bit of sense and you'll have to hold your nose and do it anyway. At least that's how I feel when I use it. But it, it, it works for my clients. It, you know, it's sometimes there are misspellings on the job description you are, you would do well to use the misspelling because that will match in the ATS. Oh, that's hard. I have, Ooh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just I thought about of what can't my, do it. <laughs> um, I've heard too many times people saying, well, I'm, I, I change my cover letter every time. Don't depend on the cover letter. Right. Um, nine times out of 10 people aren't even going to read it. And the applicant tracking system doesn't care about it at all. Do not submit your, your um, cover letter in the same file as your resume when you upload it. And um, make sure that the keywords are in the resume. The cover letter is important if they want one. Sometimes they don't want one. And then what are you going to do? But um, don't depend on the cover letter. So let me ask you ladies, um, how, you know, there's these applicant tracking systems, they're all different. How do we get past them? How do we, how do we get our resume to the eyeballs of a hiring manager? The keywords. Yeah, and Jerry told it well. So and then let's not forget about some of the other mechanics. There are some elements, um, some formatting elements, which is, one of the main reasons that I'm like, please, 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 whatever you do, do not use some of these templates. They are not designed to serve you well against applicant tracking oh, software. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of elements that people may be inclined to use like tables or text boxes, you're, you've seen some very pretty resume in a book and you were trying to duplicate it. And so you recreated it using text boxes or something like that. Well, a lot of these applicant tracking software systems, they actually can't read certain elements like graphics, and tables, text boxes. Um, what am I missing? Um, there's a couple other little areas. Headers. Headers, yes. Be careful headers. about headers. Don't put your name, address, and phone number on the first page in a formal header. Right. Or footer. Right. So yeah, yes, footer. at the yeah. top of the page, yes, but in the body of the document, not in where you have to double click to get into the header, not up there. And so there are just too many things. Uh, people don't understand how the applicant tracking systems actually read a document, how columns are read. And so I see people, you know, because columns are read in applicant tracking top to bottom. <laughs> they don't read left to right like we would look at a page. And so if you have like all of your section categories down in a row, but all your content is over here, they don't necessarily go together quite right. And so there are just so many opportunities to, to fail in applicant tracking systems, even though the content of your resume might've been good, 
there are just way too many opportunities to fail for certain things to not even be seen in the first place. Um, and so again, really important that you guys are here hearing this so that you don't continue to make those mistakes that you may have been making already. Um, I hear some people will load up the header and footer or header or footer with keywords and maybe, you know, white them out or something, but that doesn't work, it sounds like. Okay. Um, no, it's considered kind of black hat stuff. Yeah. Amanda, any other thoughts from you on applicant tracking system? No, I agree with everything. I mean, Donna's the expert on that. We all kind of just follow on her footsteps, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> She does seem to know what she's talking about in that regard. So I, whatever she says, I do. <laughs> and someday, Donna, I'll get the language right. Applicant yeah, you will. <laughs> and you guys, just so you know, right, Donna didn't just make this stuff up, right? This is not just like some make-believe theory she heard about on the internet. Um, we, we, are, we belong to the National Resume Writers Association, so we do deep dives into these things. We have experts who actually speak with the engineers who build these software systems. So we understand exactly how they work so that we can make sure to, um, to set you guys up for success with your resumes. Absolutely. Um, so kind of diving into that a little bit more. So there are a ton of opinions on a good resume. Um, Brenda, I've heard you talk about my aunt Sally has an opinion because she hired people before. Um, you know, why are there so many good opinions on, or so many opinions on this topic? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of agendas. Mm. Mm. A recruiter needs a certain thing. Hiring manager needs a certain thing. The HR department needs a certain thing. Certified resume writers are, are taught to consider all of those circumstances, all of those perspectives and write to each one of them so that you shouldn't have to worry about, oh, I need to do this for my recruiter. I mean, your specific recruiter may request something. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you have to talk them out of them. I know a recruiter that says one page, one page, I don't care if you got 40 years of experience, one page resume. That's <laughs> not <Be> right. <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're doing that so that when they submit people's resumes to their clients, that they all are on an equal plane. Mm -hmm. It's that they all right. look the same and so that they can judge them on merit rather than um, resume design or resume mm -hmm. formatting. Yeah. But it's important to note that, you know, if someone asks you to do something a certain way and they're going to hand it over, you probably want to do it the way they tell you to do yeah. it. <laughs> you know, I tell people all the time, I'm giving you best, um, best practices, but if an employer says, hey, I want you to write in your resume your favorite taco, freaking write in your resume your favorite taco because it's a test. They're trying to figure it out. And so if you don't follow their instructions, they're gonna assume you're doing like a lot of people unfortunately do is they pull up their little phone, they have their resume on their phone and they just hit submit, submit, submit. And they're not personalizing it. They're not looking at, do I need to send a cover letter or not? They're not doing anything other than pushing buttons. And at the end of the day, that's highly ineffective. Right. So ladies, there's a lot of, free online tools to build a resume. Um, you mentioned one with job scan. That's a keyword, um, you know, viewing keywords, but oh, people are always like, I need a template. I, what do I do? Where's the free tool to help me write my resume? Thoughts? Where do you, what do you use? Oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no templates. <laughs> <laughs> They're not useful. They're most of them have now I'm going to go back to to ATS friendly resumes because many of you are going to be using those. The templates are often not ATS friendly. They have tables in them. They're, they're written, they're formatted wrong so that none of your information will even show up on an ATS scanner. So I, I've never used them. I don't think they're useful. And, and people that I've talked to, people come to me saying, 
I've been trying to use that Microsoft template and I can't oh, no. get it. I can't get the spacing right. And it, and I say, throw it away. It's not doing you any good. Jerry taught me some, well, taught, I think all of us something. Uh, one of the ways that she would deliver um, resumes to her clients is to provide a, a visual version or a visual format and then an ATS compatible format. Um, and so listen, if you absolutely must and you just feel compelled to use templates, please understand that this is not the version of your resume that you'll want to use to upload into these applicant tracking systems. Absolutely. You can use them, go have at it, but use that one when you are directly in communication with another human being um, and you have to eliminate the ATS from those very pretty looking resumes. And so otherwise, yes, just kind of embrace the fact that you need to steer clear of these templates if you are using um, online applications. Um, and a lot of times, like when you build an Indeed resume, it works per perfectly fine for Indeed, but it works like crap anywhere else. And so just kind of recognize that these tools, LinkedIn, right, they're, they're set up, they're going to work well on that platform, and they're going to work miserably elsewhere. And so you have to kind of cater to the common denominator, if you will, um, and just have a very useful universal um, format that you can use no matter where you're going. That's and great. this kind of flows into a question that was in the chat. So if people aren't following the chat is, um, should you use a doc format or a PDF format? If you're applying online, go toward a doc format because a lot of applicant tracking software cannot read your PDF. Obviously, if you're going to send it to someone directly, and remember, these are just tools. We're giving you a tool in your toolbox. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket and say, well, I have a great resume. I'm going to get a job. I mean, I would love for the skies to part and a job to land in your lap, but that's not usually how it works. So you are going to be networking. You're going to be utilizing LinkedIn. You're going to be doing a lot of different things. And if you meet somebody who says, hey, can you send me over your resume? I'd love to take a look. By all means, use that visual presentation, PDF, send over that beautiful version. But if you're applying online and assume anytime you apply online, they're going to use an applicant tracking software, always use the doc simple format version. Great. Yeah, Donna. Since we're coming to the end, there's just two things I wanna be sure that we get in. If anybody's applying for a federal job, for instance, through USA Jobs, that's a totally different resume. I'm not saying that some of the content isn't going to be the same as we've been talking about today, but formatting is very different. There's things that you do on a federal resume that you would never do um, on a, a private sector resume. That's number one. And then the LinkedIn um, uh, profile is so important and it should be your resume on steroids. It isn't just, just your resume exactly. It should every, de you can get a lot of detail. You've got lots of room there. Put everything, all your, um, your uh, courses, your projects, your charity work, um, and of course your accomplishments. But make sure that you optimize that LinkedIn profile. Um, I just want to say something on LinkedIn. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, this is obviously not a LinkedIn talk today, but we want you all to know that LinkedIn is, um, I think, the number one source for recruiters in in yeah. online sourcing, searching. So make sure the one of the reasons Donna's telling you that is that that means it can be keyword heavy. There can be a ton of keywords in there. And if recruiters are looking by keyword um, in their um, strings that they're searching, uh, you want your resume to pop up. So it needs to be loaded up with tons of keywords. Uh, all right, I wanna, I know we're almost out of time. I am, we've gotten a lot of questions about cover letters. Um, and you all have different opinions on cover letters. So what do, what, what do we do with cover letters? Do we do them? Do we not? What do you include? Give us your 30 second spiel on cover letters. 50% of recruiters and other people who read resumes say that they don't read cover letters. 50% say they do. I 
I would, I recommend sending a cover letter because you don't know who you're talking to. If they don't read it, oh well, have a good resume. If they do read it, you can up your chances of making an impact. Perfect. There's a however to that though. If you're applying online and there's no window in which to upload that cover letter, then they probably don't want one. Oh, sure. Follow directions. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's important because that's when people start wanting to attach their cover letter to the resume in the same file. Yeah. And that isn't going to be a good thing. Good. Okay, so my last question for you guys is, um, we always have, people are always asking us, who do you know that writes resumes? Who, who can help me? So we love to tell everyone about you guys because it matters. Um, you know, but we also know that it's an investment. So it, what's the difference between, um, you know, spending a couple hundred bucks to have my resume done versus talking to a recruiter and getting their opinion? Um, maybe especially if someone needs is changing industry. But um, what are your thoughts on getting resumes done and why do people hire you guys to do this? Well, as I mentioned to start with, you know, I deal with a lot of sales and marketing people who are awesome at selling and marketing a widget or a service or whatever, but they're, they're a challenge to write a resume. I mean, I've been writing resumes for nearly 25 years and I went and looked at mine about five years ago. There were no accomplishments on it. It stunk. Like it's hard to write your own resume. Now I understand, and I'm sure that the ladies will agree with me that if you have to pay your mortgage or get a resume writer, you're paying your mortgage, right? You do what you need to do. And most of us will be happy to review your resume, no charge, no obligation. We'll just give you some hints and suggestions just so that you have some ideas. And a lot of people at Career Connectors have done that. They'll do it, they'll fix it up, they'll come back and say, I fixed it, what do you think now? And We'll look at it and they'll fix it up. And so, you know, that's another option. But the reason that people invest with us is something that Brenda said earlier. You know, we don't go, we don't do our own stitches, right? We don't paint our own houses. We hire people who are going to do a better job of that and put our resources where our resources are best spent. And fit is a huge component in choosing a resume writer. You need to pick someone who's going to work in a way that works for you. Yeah. Some writers will do a worksheet. Some will just work from your old resume. Some will do an out and out consultation. Some just work on the resume. Some talk about the job search. Some do career coaching. So you need to talk to them and see what it is that you're getting. If you are paying $50 for a resume, you're going to get a $50 resume, you know? <laughs> so you need to think about it. I think most of us are kind of in the you know, $300 to $1,500 range, depending on the services and support that you need. So it's, again, it's an investment in your future. And I think that all of us can also say that when people put the money toward a resume, and this has been statistically proven outside of this group, they find a job faster you that bet. pays them more because they have a professional resume that ticks all of the boxes that the employers are looking for. There's also the relationship component. I, I still work with clients I first met 15, 16, 17 years ago. I'm writing resumes for their kids now. Yeah. That relationship is important. I keep in, in touch with them at least once a, once a year to remind them to update their resume. If not with me, do it yourself because they can do that. They they have that good template that I wrote for them. Many of them can just add what they need to add. Some can't or don't have time, but you know, my rates are half for an update. So you're not spending that, that big amount the second and third and fourth times. You're spending that once and then you're updating. So you know, forge that relationship, use that person as a resource, keep them in your contacts file, know who they are and how they work, because they'll be with you for your whole career if you let them. Amen to, yes. amen to Jerry. I just say also that a professionally written resume, 
um, can help you see yourself differently. Yes. Uh, it can, it can boost your own confidence. Um, sometimes, you know, that pesky word fear creeps its ugly head into the conversation and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm amazing. Look at all that I've done. Look at me. Did I do that? Yes, you did. Um, and a great writer can help to extract and pull those pieces out of you. So, um, don't be afraid. <laughs> I, that's one of my favorite things you guys do um, is ask about your client. So I remember Donna, you doing this for me when you were working on some LinkedIn or, or a profile for me. And um, you just kept asking and asking and asking and asking. I'm like, I don't know. But then you just kept going at it and getting the good <laughs> stuff that I would never think of. And yes. so um, Brenda, I just had a friend of mine that worked with you uh, last week and he's like, she was amazing she made me feel amazing <laughs> and so I'm like I know they're all so good so um yeah uh, that's awesome thank you God. thank you ladies um we really appreciate uh your time today and um for any of you that joined a little bit late a couple things you can keep chatting ask drop questions in the chat Amanda's been answering these ladies are also going to get on and um, look through and answer uh we are having breakout sessions at the end so these ladies will each have their own room that you can join to have some additional conversation. And so whether it's um, in a one-on-one -on -one or a small group format, depending on how many people are in the room, they will be in there for you. So how about a virtual round of virtual applause for uh, everyone that's here today. Uh, ladies, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. You are awesome. All right, we are gonna now jump over to our hiring company. Cybercom is here, and Caitlin Meek is an operations recruiter with Cybercom International, which is a leading provider of interpretation services in the U.S., hiring for interpreter roles in a variety of languages. Um, their phone interprets bridge language barriers between people who need it most, such as between doctors and patients or other essential service agents and customers. Uh, they have paid training benefits and opportunities to grow in an industry where every call makes a difference. So please help me welcome Caitlin Meek to our call today. Thank you so much, Jessica and Sheila, for uh, for having me. And um, I'm so glad I got to listen in to the resume panel. That's a, a fantastic, wherever you are in your career, it's always great to have that um, refresher and know what the, the best trends are. So thank you, ladies, for that. Um, so yeah, my name is Caitlin. I'm a recruiter with Syracom. Um, we are an Arizona-based company. Um, we provide language interpreting services for uh, a whole variety of organizations, thousands of different organizations around the US. And we support over 200 different languages and dialects. Um, so what our company does is break down language barriers and cultural barriers and make sure that everybody can access whatever care or services that they need in a language that they're comfortable with if they're not fluent in English. Um, so we have locations around the US, but the company is headquartered in Tucson. And we do have a, an office here in the Valley. Um, it's in South Phoenix, Ray Road, and the I-10. So we work across a lot of different industries, healthcare, banking and finance, insurance, uh, with the education sector, travel and hospitality. Uh, we have some government contracts. We handle 911 calls. It's really a little bit of everything. Um, so these are entry level phone interpreter positions that we're hiring for uh, right now. We have um, training classes beginning every two to three weeks. Um, and it's, it's, the requirements are, are fairly basic. Um, you have to be at least 18 years old with a high school diploma or GED, either from the US or from another country. Uh, you have to have US work authorization. Um, the main thing that we look for is that you are bilingual or you speak multiple languages. Um, so you do have to speak another language in addition to English. And we do a language assessment with you over the phone to gauge your proficiency. With that being said, you don't need to have any professional interpreting experience. This is a, a really great um, opportunity if you are looking to maybe do something a little bit different or make a pivot in your career. Um, 
we will fully train you. We offer three weeks of intensive paid interpreter training. Um, we also have a, a variety of different benefits and a ton of opportunities to grow. Our training is a combination of classroom-based instruction, practical work, all of our trainers and coaches are experienced interpreters. So they are really, really helpful and supportive through the training process. Um, in terms of benefits, we have a comprehensive benefits package. We have merit pay in increases, um, overtime opportunities. Um, it's a really diverse workplace. I, I mentioned that we support over 200 languages and dialects. In our Phoenix office alone, there's about 40 languages represented. So. Um, um, we have people from all over the US and all over the world who work with us. So you're in an environment where you're hearing a lot of different languages every day. You're getting to share um, and learn about other cultures, uh, which is always really fun. And especially because we are headquartered here in Arizona, we have a lot of opportunities to grow. Um, I have seen people move from an entry level interpreter position into uh, another role within the company, sometimes in as little as three months, which is really great. We have a, a real culture of promoting people internally. So there's, also, there's definitely opportunities in training and development and curriculum development in uh, supervisor, capacity, but also on our corporate side. So I've had people go into marketing, I've had them go into recruiting, um, HR, IT, uh, sales, lots of different areas from that entry level recruiting uh, or in entry level interpreter, excuse me, position. Um, some of the industries we support, healthcare is a big focus. Uh, that's about 75% of what we do insurance, financial services, um, health insurance, education, utility companies, government contracts, telecom, travel and hospitality. It's really a little bit of everything. So it's a, it's a call center phone-based position, but you get to do something different with every single call that you take. There's not a typical day. You're not solving the same problem over and over, answering the same question over and over again, like with a lot of call center positions. Um, mentioned some of the growth opportunities. We also offer a tuition assistance program for full-time employees after your first year with us. Um, so that's a great way to further your professional development and further your career within the company. Um, we have a lot of people who've used that to complete associates or bachelor's degrees or pursue a master's or even just to get technical certifications if they're looking to move into IT or HR certifications or things like that to help further their career. Um, currently, we're hiring for a wide variety of languages. Um, Spanish, definitely all the time. Um, and we have full-time and part-time positions available. We're also hiring for everything from Amharic to Vietnamese um, and pretty much everything in between. So these are some of the languages we're looking for right now. Um, if you, you speak another language and you don't see it there, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're not hiring. Um, my contact information, Sheila has been kind enough to put that in the chat for us. Please feel free to reach out to me directly anytime. Um, I always love talking with people and I'm gonna stick around for um, a session in the breakout room as well. Um, so we have our next training class in Phoenix is starting December 22nd. Um, so I would love to talk with anybody who might be interested in joining that. Um, I have put our careers website here and Sheila's put that in the chat as well. Um, and my contact information again. One thing I did just want to touch on briefly um, is obviously the pandemic has made an impact on all kinds of businesses. With Syracom right now, the majority of our employees are working remotely um, temporarily until public health conditions get a little more under control. Um, new employees are being trained at our center with a number of health and safety precautions in place before um, you know, they are approved to work from home. So happy to answer questions about that as well. But thank you again to the whole Career Connectors team, to Jessica and to Sheila uh, for having me. And um, I look forward to hopefully speaking with some of you job seekers uh, in the breakout session later. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. There were some languages on there I'd never even heard of. <laughs> Sometimes I have to Google them before I start recruiting. It's true. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for being here. All right. We're going to jump over um, to U.S. Health Advisors. One of the questions we get a lot of is, 
um, when people are going through career transition, especially an unexpected one is, what do I do about insurance, health insurance specifically? And so um, we partnered up with uh, Joe, the insurance pro and US Health Advisors, and he is excited to be our trusted health insurance advisor. He takes great pride in helping people. It's really his passion. He's been running his own agency for over uh, two years, and he's been a leader on every team that he's been on. Um, so I wanted to let you know that I actually inquired with Joe um, a while back, and he responded quickly, immediately, and I had quotes that were a great fit for our budget. So by that, I was like, all right, he's the best. He really gave us some great options. So we're super excited to partner with Joe, the health insurance pro via U.S. Health, uh, health Advisors. Hi, Joe. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, I got to say, Amanda, Donna, Jerry, and Brenda, um, you guys killed it. I hope everyone took notes and uh, get to hear this. I would share that information with the people, and I, I reached out to a ton of people uh, throughout the process and let them know to jump on and, and get an education. So thank you so much, ladies, and thank you, your uh, connectors, for, again, putting on another uh, opportunity to people uh, find the best opportunity that fits them uh, or the best job that fits them. I'm a health insurance pro. I help individuals, families, and small businesses and the proper health insurance based on their wants, their needs, and their affordability. Um, I built my team in a way that uh, pretty much whoever comes our way, whether it's Medicare people, uh, people on COBRA, nine small businesses, uh, families that uh, the, the employee of the mom or father who is working at the company uh, is taken care of, but where they might charge a little bit more uh, for the rest of the family members or the significant other. Uh, and do things differently, you know, um, started doing screen shares and walking people through a couple of the best plans based on what they told me that their wants or needs are, or what they told my team their wants or needs are. And it's really helped to show people the different aspects and compare plans in front of them. And it allows them to make an educated and informed choice. Um, if you're working with me, you're working with my team, you're dealing with background, fingerprint and agents, uh, we cover 30 states, and uh, Jessica said we take a lot of what we do. Um, when you call myself or my business partners, our goal is to get back with you immediately, but at the latest in four to eight hours, um, and that would only be because I six hours, so I say, hey, just give me a little uh, little wiggle room with the twins that I have that are years so, old. Um, what can I share with you guys? Right now, there's a lot of people that are on COBRA. There's a lot of people looking for health insurance because it's open enrollment. Um, if you send people my way and we take care of them, um, I put, I'll put i make you part of my affiliate program. Um, and what that does, it allows us to give cards for helping help other people. And uh, we take great pride in the opportunities that we're given. People are referred to us. So if you know people need health insurance that think insurance uh, that might be on Obamacare feel that there's could possibly be a better option for them they're just not sure where to go or who to talk to 1099s families divorcees um, believe it or not are a huge demographic unfortunately that we um, anyone that retired before the age of 64 uh, and then anyone that's coming off their parents health insurance um, we just love to help people uh, we do offer life insurance options, and I do have life insurance specialists that just popped up on the chat, so I'll answer that right away. Um, you offer, uh, my team and I offer vision and dental, if you're just looking for that specifically. And um, what else? Gosh, we, we're number one in private health care. Uh, we've been number one four out of the last five years and seven out of the last 11 uh, the reason is, is we take pride in the people that we hire and the people that I bring onto my team. Uh, and there's no questions that you're going to deal with someone that has ethics, morals, character, integrity, and trying to help you the best way as an advisor, uh, choose the plan that's right for you, your family, or your small business. It doesn't matter what is going to affect our paychecks. That has no bearing. That's the way I teach my team. That's the way I... Uh, have always run a business. It's what's best for you, educating you, giving you enough information so that you can make the best choice on behalf of, of your family, your small business, or yourself. 
That's great, Joe. Thank you so much. And thank you for serving so many of our people. We really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So I have a couple things um, to go over real quickly, and then we will do our breakout sessions. And so um, first of all, I want to say a thank you to all of our awesome partners that we have uh, that work with us to make this happen around the valley and beyond now that we're in a virtual environment. Uh, some of them are here today. <laughs> Excuse me. And so thank you to all of our partners. Um, we greatly appreciate you. Uh, then we also have additional resources uh, specifically launched because of COVID. And so Best Companies AZ backslash, uh, .com backslash resources has a ton of information around uh, verified companies that are hiring now, additional employer and job seeker resources. And so pop onto that website and take a look. There's some additional um, information and tons of hiring companies. We have, um, I know there are 65 that we verified that are hiring and they're posted there. And then um, the bottom section is a partnership with Maricopa County, uh, Arizona at Work, Maricopa County, and it's um, additional companies that they have verified. So lots of great opportunities there. Also, uh, we have a couple resources here. We, I kept seeing in the chat, uh, about how can I see this later? How can I watch this event later? Well, there's two ways you can do that. You can go to our website, careerconnectors.org and uh, click on CC webinar. We'll show you that in just a second, but the whole thing will be posted there. This whole program will be posted there. We are also doing an event recap blog. So we have a blogger right now trying to, um, that's been typing away this whole time. And that will be posted on our website under the recap section. And so you can pull this up and it'll be written out and then it won't be written out word for word, but the content an overview of the content will be there. And then um, it'll also be out on our website. Um, we have a disc assessment you are welcome to take. It doesn't cost you anything. It typically costs $99. We have an agreement with Top Talent Consulting and it's free for you. That will tell you about some really cool soft skills that you have, um, uh, some communication tips, your ideal work environment. Some of that can be incorporated into your resume. So that's a great tool for you to go ahead and uh, utilize. Then we have next in two weeks, December 16th, our last event of the year. I'm so excited, you guys. Um, it's me. I get to be your keynote. And so um, I haven't done it yet this year. And so we thought, all right, I will close us out for uh, 20. We're going to close us out on 2020, but we're going to focus on 2021. Uh, so land your perfect job in 2021. We're still working on our hiring companies. And so we'll have a couple companies speaking that day. Um, we're back January 14th and January 28th, getting back in the groove for 2021. Yes, let's get out of this year. <laughs> um, so I'm so excited to close us out. Now, we do have something really cool coming up on December 8th as well. So that's Tuesday in a couple days. It's Tuesday. We are working with the City of Tempe Economic Development Department, along with Pipeline AZ, Arizona, um, Maricopa County, Arizona at Work, and Best Companies AZ to bring you these companies. Uh, I think there's 10 or 12, I think we have 12, 12 companies that are located in the city of Tempe that are hiring now. And so um, all of these companies will be featured at our event. You can, there's many ways you can register. You can find it on our website, but also tempe.gov backslash job fairs. They will be listed there. We're going to be doing three of them. And the first one is on December 8th. Then we're going to have January 26th and March 16th. Um, the January and the March events, we haven't booked all of the employers yet, but the December 8th is booked and ready to go. You will log on and register, and then you will get uh, the link to register on Pipeline AZ. And you want to make sure you register on Pipeline AZ because they do a job matching in the background. So um, they will match to some of these opportunities and notify the employers and the employers can reach out to you. So this December 8th is the live event. So you're going to be able to um, see the companies and um, hear about the companies, but then the ongoing matching will continue for additional two weeks. So register here and join us for that event. We're super excited about it. Uh, we did one um, 
before with the city of Chandler. Now we're doing city of Tempe and hopefully we'll be able to do a lot more next year as well. All right. So I heard something. Oh, it was when Brenda was talking about companies that have pivoted. This guy, Gordon Murray, flash photography has pivoted his business. I am so thankful he reached out to us because at our live events, we are able to bring a photographer on site and take your photo. Well, we are not doing live events right now. And so what he has offered and what he is doing for um, Career Connectors people is he is rotating around the valley and offering business portraits at no cost, um, COVID safe sessions. Um, and so there are no cost. He does accept donations if you choose to give a donation, but you can see some of the dates that are coming up. We have um, December 11th in Phoenix, December 15th in North Phoenix, and he'll, he'll continue to give us dates in January if you miss the ones in Chandler or Scottsdale. But again, they are beautiful photos. You can use them on your LinkedIn profile or however you would like. All right, so then um, again, this, this is our homepage. You can see the CC webinar section on the bottom right. That's where you, where you will find this event today. There's also two other options. There's a chat. Um, I have videos in there that are three to five minutes um, with different tips uh, around job search. And then the community update is uh, a whole bunch of uh, interviews with different people that are in the community or in job search. In fact, these ladies, some of these ladies on the line did one of those with me. And so there's more resume advice in an update there. There's one for LinkedIn, which um, if you have some questions on LinkedIn, that's a great one to watch. Thank you to all of our volunteers. You guys, you guys are awesome. We have people running in the background. We have coaches on the call today. They're gonna take out breakout sessions. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And Gary for blogging today. I know that um, your fingers are probably really tired with all the stuff we had, uh, talk, we were talking about. Also, if you guys don't know, Career Connectors is a nonprofit organization and yesterday was Giving Tuesday. And so, um, which is always comes every year after Thanksgiving, after Black Friday, Cyber Saturday and um, Small Business Monday. So then they do Giving Tuesday. So if you would like to donate either now or after you land a job, we would greatly appreciate it. We um, run on donations and it's been a really tough year as it has for many people. And so it costs us $42 per person for um, each person we serve. And so if you feel so inclined to uh, provide a donation, we would really greatly appreciate that. All right, so now we are going to um, close out this session and move over to the breakout sessions and let me see if I had anything else I wanted to mention here today. Um, Sheila, I didn't see the evaluation, so I don't know if you were gonna, if, if that oh. capability. Yeah, that's, I was busy doing all the links and I forgot about that, I'm sorry. So, real quick, while you're on the line, um, Sheila is going to launch a, an evaluation. Um, there's four quick polls, just answer the question and it will go away, it will pop off your screen. Um, see, the first one is already there, so just, Go ahead and answer that question real quick and then it will go away. Uh, let's see. We do not send out the PowerPoint. I know people ask that. There wasn't a lot of PowerPoint content outside of our two hiring, our two companies today. Um, but the, again, it will be on our website and on our blog. Um, and I just want you all to know, oh, we will move into the next section, but I just want you all to know that um, regardless of the situation you're in right now, um, that our team, we are praying over you. We are praying for you that you do land into the career of your dreams. Thank you so, so much for being here today. Um, it has been an honor to be part of this with you. All right. So now we put a period on that part of the um, event. And now we're going to move in to our breakout sessions. And what we have six, let's see, six, seven, I think we're going to have eight breakout sessions today. Um, so the there's coaches. And so Brenda, um, Amanda, Donna, and Jerry are the resume writers. They're each going to go into a room. And then Tom Carr and Drew Foster are career coaches uh, or coaches that are going to, that you can talk to about interviewing, career transition, things like that. 
So they're each going to have a room. And so Sheila, I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to you to kind of explain the process of what we're going to do now. Okay. All right, great, thanks. I'm not sure that Tom could make it, but I know all of our resume writers said they could stay, Brenda only for a few minutes and the rest until 11.30. And Drew is here for LinkedIn, so that is awesome. And honestly, a lot of the, actually all of them could probably answer a lot of your career questions as well. So the thing is, Zoom about a month ago came out with the ability, they've had breakout rooms a long time, but about a month ago they, they started letting um, participants choose the room they go to. And that's what enabled us to do it in this format. But it only works if you have the latest version of Zoom software. And we'll find out a minute in a minute if you do. So once I open up the rooms, if you have the latest version of the software, you'll be able to choose where you go. I'll show you how that works in just a minute. Um, and I'm not going to do screen sharing, but I'll turn on um, that everyone can talk when I open up the rooms. When you're in the room, you can always come back to the main room if you have a question for me or if you want to go to a different room or um, you can uh, watch in the room. I'll do an announcement when we're about to close. So this will show, this is a little video that shows you how it's going to work when I open the rooms. Okay, when a host opens uh, breakout rooms, allowing participants to choose which one to go in, down in your toolbar, you're going to see the breakout room icon pop up like this and a little message says join a breakout room that goes away in a second but you can still click breakout rooms and it'll show you the list of available rooms i just left it room one two three right now but it will have uh, the type of coaching available in each room so let's say you want to go into room one you hover there and then move your mouse over to the right and the number there will turn to the word join click join It'll ask you, do you want to join room one? Say yes, and it'll send you to room one. Now, once you're in the room, you can see who's here by clicking participants at the bottom. You can chat with the people by typing. Obviously, you can also speak, <laughs> um, unmute yourself and speak. And then when you're done in that room, you can click the blue leave room button. It'll give you two choices, leave meeting or leave breakout room. Leave meeting kicks you all the way out of the Zoom session. So you wanna leave the breakout room, it'll send you back to the main screen. Okay. So like I said, that's how it'll work if you have the latest version of the software. If you do not, then you'll hang out here with me and we will get you where you wanna go. It'll just take a minute. So I know also Caitlin said she could stay and so did Joe. So right now, I, oops, I have to do it from my other computer. Start the breakout rooms. So give me just one second. And so you all are the first group that we're getting to do this with. We've tested it on our own, but you're the first Career Connectors event we're getting to do this with. So give us a little grace. <laughs> but um, Sheila's going to get the um, launch, the breakout rooms here in just a sec. And you can just pick which one you're going to go through go to again. And again, if that doesn't work for you, just hang out right here and we will get you off to the room you want to go to. So I also, I let everyone to go ahead and unmute. So does anyone have any questions while I'm making the rooms? Not a question, but you guys are awesome. Aw, thanks. Hey Drew, good to see you. Yeah, hey guys, I really enjoyed uh, the resume writing section. Um, uh, got a lot of tips uh, that I'm enjoying hearing and uh, uh, just a little, uh, I work for American Express. If you guys are wondering why the heck am I here? Um, but uh, a lot of the things that they were saying uh, hold true at American Express as well, if you decide to apply uh, our way. Nice. Okay, so right now you should all um, see in your toolbar breakout rooms. Yeah. And oh, I'm going to stop recording actually right now. I should have done that a minute ago.